Hello everyone and welcome back to another care collab. I have not said this in, I think, at least 200,000 years. But yeah, I'm super excited to join another care collab. We love those. If you're just randomly clicking on this video, um, just let me tell you that you are about to enter the most ingenious idea anyone's ever had because a care collab is when a bunch of planned YouTube people come together and talk about a specific group of orchids mostly actually you know tell you how they grow them in their respective conditions and the beauty of that is that you will really get to see how people grow them all over the world and I'm sure someone in this group is gonna have the same conditions that you have and it's gonna make caring for these plants so much easier so this time we're talking about slipper orchids in general for me it's mostly Paphiopedalum don't really have anything else um, I remember once going to Curly Norchideen which is a nursery in Germany and I was really intrigued by this uh, Fragmipedium Bessie that they had I don't really remember why I didn't pick it up then this is so cute and I think this it kind of speaks to me no Who knows? Who knows? Anyways, I have to look to the site to give you the list of all the participating channels in alphabetical order because that's how we do things here. Beauty of Orchids and Plants, Danielle's Orchid Ranch, Dee Dee Blooms, Ed's Orchids, Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents, Hello Plant Lovers, Hillbilly Orchids, Joyous Orchids, Julie's Orchids. I think she has a card a few fragmentediums. I'm gonna watch her video and be jealous of that. Karen's Orchids, Mary G Orchids and more, Ninja Orchids, who's actually also the organizer of this care club, so thanks a lot for organizing this, Nina, amazing. Orchids by the Lake, Simply Orchids, etc. Toki World, Mark, The Orchid Saga, The Right Path, Trish's Orchid Life, and Tropical Plants Finland. And you can see there's kind of the sad remaining flower of uh, the Paphiopedalum season. I'm originally from Germany and I moved to Switzerland very recently. I feel like this video is already all over the place. Anyways, let me just, you know, this is a group video, but let me just make it all about me. Just about me first. It's yeah. the me show, it's all about me. Yeah. I'm not sure if people are going to get that reference. Anyways. But yeah, so I very recently moved to different countries, so um, the conditions are changing. I'm still getting used to my new flat and everything, right? Also, these plants have gone through move, I guess, like two and a half-ish months ago now, so uh, they might still be a little stressed. Anyways, my plants are kind of used to being stressed because I don't really like to water that much, which is going to be reflected in the potting medium I'm using for my Paphiopedalum. I tend to skip watering day more often than I should. At the same time, I do encourage you to not let your Paphiopedalum dry out because in my hands that's really something they do not love. More on that later. So we have a Central European temperate climate with four very distinct seasons. It's spring now. Things are getting longer, we love that. Um, not 100% sure about the highs and lows yet. I'm new to this specific area, but before that, would have pretty warm summers. I used to live underneath, right underneath the roof where the heat would just really go insane. And as you can tell, I supplement the light for the plants with grow lights. I use the Mars Hydro grow lights. And those are kind of the only ones I've ever used, aside from some grow light bulbs, which I don't really love that much. So I would definitely prefer these panels. Slipper orchids is kind of an umbrella term for several genera of orchids that share kind of this characteristic flower shape. You can see kind of this is the pouch here. I don't know, I hope you can see this. The idea is that this looks like a shoe that you can make a slipper. So um, there are several genera. I think Fragmipedium is the one that's kind of native to uh, Southern America. And then Paphiopedalum is um, native to kind of Eastern Asia. Me in particular, the Paphiopedalums that I really like are the ones with the modeled leaf. I'll, I'll just quickly show this one. This is Paphiopedalum with the stem, and I hope you can see kind of 
and you can see, definitely see the leftover flower spikes. I'll show a picture of this when it was in bloom in December, I want to say. Um, but you can see, I really like the leaf texture on these ones, have like these little purplish dots on the underside and the top is really like, almost like a leopard print, but in green. So fashionable, we love it. And so yeah, I really like these plants because they kind of, the flowers are really nice and they're super long lasting, but the leaves and the texture and everything is just so nice. Another one I have here, uh, sorry, I'm just tipping over other plants. <laughs> Another one I have here, this is Pachypetalum villanatii. I'll show a picture of this one when it was in bloom. This one is really cool because it has a sort of velvety texture of the leaves and the flowers smell so nice. And mine kind of smells a little bit like lemon drops, almost like a, you know, like these hard candy that's supposed to be lemon flavored. I think other people have said their smells like roses. Well, I don't know. Maybe there's also a difference in the individuals, but yeah, kind of, I have a very small collection of them, but um, I've had some of them for three years now, this one for example. So I feel like I can give just a few hints when it comes to culture. The genus Paphiopetalum is kind of semi-terrestrial. What that means is that unlike other orchids which typically grow like Cattleyas or Vandas and so on, they're not epiphytic, so they like to grow kind of on the floor of the forest. And they don't really grow in the soil itself, but kind of, if you imagine you have a forest, you have leaves dropping, you have little twigs and so on, you have moss growing. So they grow in this like airy mixture, which is still much denser than what an epiphytic orchid would encounter. Um, I'm not sure if I'm making sense here, but ultimately um, Paphiopetalums have evolved to grow in a more water retentive medium. This is reflected in the potting mix that I use for them. So if we have a look, for example, at this little pot, this is another Paphiopetalum genustum, but this is the album color variety, so the one that's green, not white. You can see that I have mine in like little pots and my mix contains bark and sphagnum moss. So I'm trying to use the bark to give the feel of, you know, some airiness. But I add the sphagnum moss for its ability to really retain some more moisture, which is really important for these plants. Their roots do not withstand any air, basically, in my condition. So well, other plants, like this Cattleya, for example, like to grow some aerial roots in my conditions. Paphiopetalums, usually when the roots are not covered by media, they just dry out. So this is one tip I can give you, is keep them just always a little hydrated. Um, I feel like compared to other genera of you know, these epiphytic orchids, they can really withstand much higher moisture levels. But don't overwater at the same time, right? Like, don't keep them soggy. Just keep them, you know, like, hydrated. And I think it's it's kind of difficult to give general guidelines for that, but I would just say, if you check, like for example, this one, I don't know if you can use it. Right, it's, it's still a little damp, right? It doesn't go full crunchy dry and so I try to kind of water them maybe like once a week a big portion then when I notice the top layer is really drying out I just spritz them a little bit just to keep them I don't know why I'm going on about this so long but you know it's important to not let them dry out too too much and at the same time many of them kind of grow in forests that are placed on limestone so they are used to higher levels of calcium I've seen many nurseries actually add maybe some seashells or whatever to the mix. Um, I haven't done that, but I make sure that they get Calmac kind of with every other watering to really give them the calcium. So I'm kind of on a calcium journey in my collection right now because turns out Cattleyas need a lot of calcium apparently, which I haven't given them. Um, but I knew that Paphiopetalums need it, and so never really seen them be deficient. They're also very slow growers, so, you know. 
Um, I feel like this video is so ranty and uh, this is what happens when you have literally no plan on what you want to talk about and you just film after work. Anyways, uh, when it comes to light levels, if we go back to what we talked about, you know, these puffy petalins grow on uh, the floor of the forest so they do not really get as much light as an epiphytic orchid that would be much higher up in the tree. So um, as you can see, they're not really right underneath the grow light in my conditions. The grow light is kind of my substitution for sun. Um, so I just kind of use other plants that I have to almost shade them a little bit. This way I can kind of use the grow space I have more efficiently. I put plants that need a lot of light in the center and then use their leaves to shade the um, pathophyllums. As you can see here, for example, I have a cattleya here that gets hit by much more direct light and then this pathophyllum still gets light. It's not in a complete darkness, but the light levels are much lower than what I would offer for a lelia, a cattleya or a vanda. I um, also mentioned already that they're kind of slower growers, so don't expect them to really put out a lot of new growth. Don't expect them to grow super quickly. I feel like with puffy petalums, at least in my hands, it's like slow and steady wins the race. So they just spend basically most of the year maturing new growth. And then towards the winter, December, January, February, this is when they flower in my collection. It's April now, we still have this bloom, so this tells you how long lasting these flowers can really be. So I had the first ones that opened for me this season were the uh, Venustums. They um, stayed in bloom from kind of December, early December to uh, the end of January. And then this one kind of opened um, in February and it's kind of the flower is on its last legs now. So you can expect kind of two months of bloom, which I think for especially for species orchids pretty long. So I find them extremely rewarding, I find them very easy going. Their foliage is really nice to look at, they kind of add a little bit of interest even when they're not in bloom. And then when they're flowering, I find their blooms are really exciting. They look very different from other flowers that I have in my collection, so that's always nice, right? Variatio delectat, as the Romans used to say. So yeah, I'm on the lookout for some harder to find puffy petalums right now as well to kind of expand the collection. As I mentioned with the puffy petalum Delanatii, there are uh, fragrant puffy petalums um, out there. Uh, I also have the puffy petalum Hangiano, which is supposed to have a very strong rose fragrance. Then Mark from Toki World, um, he's actually one of the collaborators here. He sent me a puffy petalum Concolor, which is supposed to have a fruity fragrance. I think there's Malipoense, which is supposed to have kind of a raspberry-ish fragrance. That's super hard to find in Europe though. I've, I've been looking for a while now, I can't seem to find that. I think there's Rothschildianum, which is like a non-modeled leaf Paphiopatalum, which is supposed to smell very spicy, kind of peppery. I'm not sure if I want that, to be honest, because the model leaf won't really speak to me. You know, it's really cool to have a little collection in the bigger collection, so I'm kind of on the lookout. If you know of any European nursery that sells Paphiopatalum, Malipuense, let me know. I really, I really want to get my hands on that one, just to see if it actually smells like raspberries. That would be so cool. Um, other than that, I'm really interested also in getting some more Delanati color forms. I have the Tifo, which is just kind of a white petal sepals and kind of a um, rosy pouch. But they have them also in completely white. The album, there's kind of a vin color with like a darker pouch, which is um, really interesting. I think they have like a semi-album. I'm not sure how that is different from the Tipo. The Tipo is already white and rose, so or like a pinkish color. I'm not sure, but you know, as a collector, you need that one as well. Um, I have, I'm not gonna lie, the Delanatii produced like three or four new growths in the last season, but they still haven't fully matured yet. You can see that there are you know, still kind of these little growths here. It's been 
kind of slow. I wonder if it's just kind of too many growths in parallel. So I haven't seen any flowers from that one yet this season. Maybe it's gonna skip this season and then maybe next season there will be flowers coming. Let's see. Apparently Delanatii is a bit harder to get to rebloom. Yeah, if you have any more questions, pop them in the comments below. Don't forget to check out the other collaborators. I'm sure even if I grow under completely different conditions than you do, I'm sure you'll find someone who has a very similar climate to what you're used to and I think that will be even more helpful. Last year we've already done a care collab on Papier Petalums. I'll link that one as well. I think it's here, right? This is where the eye goes. And yeah, so I have not filmed a video in quite some time. It's a new job and everything. It's been a little... You know, the vibe is just not right. So, uh, um, yeah, I'm hoping I'll be able to kind of produce a little more content. I think the next videos that are coming will be Repot With Me style videos. So uh, I have also hauls. I have lots of different things on my channel. Just check it out, subscribe. And if you have any more questions, leave them in the comments. Um, and if I can't answer, then I'm sure someone in the Care Club will be able to get back to you. So yeah, um, see you later, boom. And so yeah, we're all coming together. Um, I forget when this is supposed to be posted, actually. Well, I mean, you're gonna see it. It's gonna be live that day. And yeah, didn't I? Um, but yeah, so there are some that are flav uh, flavored. <laughs> There are some that are fragranced and light-wise, I feel like... So, anyway. Like, comment, subscribe, share the video, as all the YouTubers always say.